big man! Oh, it's pretty! It's so, so pretty! The final weekend of regular season play was pure madness. Who would win the battle for the eighth and final playoff berth? Stick around, you're about to find out. This is MASL Primetime. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Bastiavansky. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. And there is a ton to cover. Here's what we're going to do uh, on today's show. Now last week was the final week of regular season play. So for the highlights, we're only going to focus on the games that involve the battle for the eighth and final playoff spot. And later on, we're going to have a full first round playoff preview for you. But first, the highlights, starting with St. Louis. Now, it had two games left to play and had to win out to have any hope of qualifying. Both games were against in-state rival Kansas City. But in game one, it was the Comets that drew first blood. For second time, it's gonna be a little bit different. You already heard the name Hermerski, the goal, no Nikolaou Neto tonight. Kansas City, a chance on a second try, they will take a lead. You can hear the sadness in St. Louis announcer Joey Zanaboni's voice there as KC goes up one nothing. Two minutes later, the Comets hit again. Now remember, St. Louis had to win both games last weekend to have any hope of qualifying for the playoffs, but hold on, they come alive. JT Thomas cuts the deficit in half, and then 23 seconds later, William SK off to the races, and he ties it up 2-2, and they kept on a coming. Dudica Carvalho smashing it top shelf, but take a look at the replay here. Watch the little dummy right there by Pepe Junquera. Gorgeous. 3-2 ambush, then in the second quarter, now Michaud and SK with a two-on-one against Gibson. Michaud gets past his slide, he gets it, fires to SK! He'll fire it into the back! Ambush! Oh, baby! Oh yeah, Joey sounded much happier there for good reason. St. Louis was halfway there. They win the first of their two games against KC, 8-3. Another team they were battling for eighth spot was Milwaukee, who was hosting Dallas. Now the Wave also could not afford a loss if it wanted to make the playoffs. They were dominant in this one. Alex Bradley drawn first blood for Milwaukee. Late in the quarter, Bradley plays give and go with Gordy Gerson. He rips the twine and it was two zip for the wave. Now the sidekicks would cut into that lead though. Uh, nice initial stop by Joey here, but Bradley Baladez pumps home the rebound. 2-1 after the first quarter, but Milwaukee runs away with it after that. Andrew Hayne, nothing but daylight in front of him. He makes no mistake. And the Wave waltz to the 8-2 win, but they needed some help in order to claim that last playoff spot, and St. Louis didn't give him any as the ambush swept their home and home with the Comets, dropping them 6-3 on Saturday, which meant it all came down to this. If Ontario... One in San Diego on Sunday. It would qualify for the playoffs if they lost. St. Louis and Milwaukee would. Oh, the drama. The Fury was suffering through a seven-game losing streak, but they hit first Justin Stinson, making it one nothing. And there was hope, but San Diego would even it up. Charlie Gonzalez finding the top corner to make it 1-1. Second quarter, uh-oh, Ontario falling behind. Leo de Oliveira picks his spot. Oh boy, too good. And the Sockers go up 2-1, but the Fury wasn't about to go quietly. Onua Obazi, nice move and the finish. It was tied 2-2, but with the game knotted uh, at three apiece. Ball to Leo, Leo scores! That is the winner. Oh man, Ontario loses its last eight games of the season and they miss the playoffs, which seemed unthinkable just a month ago. Now, a quick mention, kudos to Utica, who dropped Chihuahua 6-3 and briefly moved into the last playoff spot. However, with St. Louis and Milwaukee winning, they came up just a bit short in the end. Here are the final standings. San Diego clinches the West. Chihuahua gets the wild card. Ontario... They are not going to forget that finish for a long time. Unfortunate. Central Division. All teams qualify. KC clinches the division, but Dallas, St. Louis, and Milwaukee 
all manage to pick up wild card bursts out east florida uh takes the east division baltimore grabs a wild card utica and harrisburg uh, miss out on the playoffs this year so here are your first round matchups san diego and milwaukee kansas city and dallas florida taking on st louis and four versus five will be chihuahua and baltimore and in the semifinals teams will be reseeded and to keep up to date on everything that's going on in the first round make sure to check out maslsoccer.com Welcome back to MASL Primetime. So here we go. After four months of regular season play, the final eight has been determined and the postseason is ready to kick off. So many questions still remain though. Can Chihuahua continue its red hot play? Can Florida find its form once again? And can anyone stop defending champion San Diego? Here's more on that now in our MASL first round playoff preview. It's time. The playoffs are here. Eight teams will square off in the quest for the Ron Newman Cup. Well, I'll tell you, Alex, it was a great regular season, but this is what we all come to our jobs to be here for. The Ron Newman Cup playoffs. Eight teams now locked in. We've got the best against the best. I can't wait. And San Diego will go into the playoffs as an overwhelming favorite, having won 20 consecutive matches. But they'll face a veteran Milwaukee Wave squad that knows a thing or two about winning. For me, the key to this entire series is going to be defense, and that's on both sides. The Sockers are the only club in the MASL that has not conceded 100 goals in the regular season. Milwaukee's defense has come and go at times. Joey Capinos has really locked things down on the back end, but he's going to need to be terrific. And more than anything, Milwaukee almost has to win that home game to put the pressure on San Diego coming back to Pachanga Arena. San Diego has the depth and recently had stars Craig Childs and Christian Gutierrez return from injury. But Milwaukee has MASL leading scorer and reigning MVP Ian Bennett. The Sockers know they can't take the wave lightly for a second. You've got the two defending Ron Newman Cup winners from the last two seasons that have been played to completion going at it 1v8. This isn't gonna be your average series. The Florida Tropics face the St. Louis Ambush, a two versus seven matchup. The Tropics faded a bit down the stretch, losing three of their final five games, while St. Louis qualified in the final weekend of play. St. Louis and Florida, really excited to see this one because on one side, you've got the team that's been kind of the co-favorite to take it all, and then St. Louis flying onto the radar in the last weekend, getting the critical results they needed to surge into the playoffs. And you've got a team that's coming in hot in the ambush. you got a Florida team that faded a little bit down the stretch, but probably has the best cadre of talent. You know, they've just got the most exciting attack. Craig Elston feels that goalkeeping could be the difference maker in this series. Because once Hugo Silva left the team, it's been a bit of a mismatch, or a mishmash in the back, not a mismatch. How strong will the defense be in the back for the Tropics? Can they make the big stops when they need it? You know, when I look at the ambush, you kind of have to talk about Eduardo Pollo Cortez. If Pollo is red hot and they can steal a game on the road, then you never know. This is going to be a fun one. Third seeded Kansas City faces the resurgent Dallas sidekicks, the number six seed. Kansas City is led by their incomparable player coach, Leo Gibson, while Rookie of the Year candidate Luis Morales teams with Jamie Lovegrove for a dangerous one-two punch for Dallas. I'm expecting a very close match between Dallas and Kansas City. Uh, if, if this game were to occur, say, you know, earlier in the season, KC's run of play was much better than, than Dallas was early on in the season. but. Since the addition of Jamie Lovegrove, 
and the addition of Ricardinho coaching. This Dallas team has gotten so much better. Did you know that the Kansas City Comets and the Dallas Sidekicks have never met in the postseason? So this will be the first ever meeting between Dallas and KC in the indoor game. It's going to be special. Last, but certainly not least, in what just might be the most fascinating series of all, number four, Chihuahua, takes on number five, Baltimore. The Savage enter the playoffs as one of the league's hottest teams, having won 15 of its last 17 games, but you can never count out the blast. I mean, they, uh, Chihuahua's got seven guys that have scored 20 goals this year. Uh, and Chihuahua's going to be uh, so hard to beat. And their goalkeeper, El Sargente, uh, he is going to be unbelievable in goal here. So Chihuahua is going to be a really formidable team uh, to beat this year. And for Baltimore, uh, they just got stronger. Vinny Dantas is back in their lineup now. They've got six players that have scored 20 goals this year. This is going to be one of the funnest series to keep track of uh, this MASO playoff season. So those are your first round playoff matchups. The biggest question of all is can anyone knock off the defending champion San Diego Sockers who looked virtually unbeatable this season? I don't know. They're an all-star team. Can anybody beat them? Sure they can, but it's not going to be easy. Welcome back, everyone. So, yeah, the playoffs are here. And joining me today to talk about the postseason is the Ontario Furies play-by-play -play man himself, Christian Philemon. Philly, how you doing, buddy? What's going on, Alex? So happy to be back on MASL Primetime. It's good to see you again, my friend. Philly, never lacking in enthusiasm. Love it, buddy. Okay, time is short. So uh, this is going to be very rapid fire style today as we try to get these questions and answers off. Let's start off with uh, the most intriguing first round playoff matchup in your eyes, Christian. I'm going to have to go with the matchup between the Baltimore Blast and the Chihuahua Savage. These teams don't have a history against each other. And at the same time, both of these teams are accustomed to playing in intimate, cozy environments. So the pace is going to be fast and frenetic. Okay, so the Florida Tropics were dominant for so much of the regular season, Christian, but they definitely faded a bit down the stretch. Are they a club that you see as being somewhat vulnerable as they enter the playoffs? I don't think so. I mean, the season ends, but we're technically in another season. Everybody's record is 0-0. I think what Clay, uh, Coach Clay Roberts does is fantastic, and he's got such a talented squad. The only question mark has to be in between the pipes. Then losing Hugo Silva hurts, but that would be, that would be the only vulnerable spot, I would think. I think they're going to be okay within this first round. So the Chihuahua Savage, of course, started the season so slowly, but they finished with a bang as one of the hottest teams in the MASL, uh, of all the squads in the postseason, are they the one that's most likely to pull an upset against San Diego, in your opinion? Yeah, my top two choices for who I think could potentially win it all, yes, would be San Diego and Chihuahua. Those new players that they brought in, they're clicking and firing on all cylinders. Chihuahua is, is a team that is to be reckoned with. And if they started out the season with the players that they had, Later on, I, I don't think it would have been a question. They would have totally given San Diego a run for their money. Well, just as a follow-up question then to that, Christian, do you see any team being able to knock off San Diego who rang up one of the best regular seasons in MASL history? If the sports writers and news reporters were smart, they would cover this beautiful game of indoor soccer. We witnessed one of the greatest winning streaks in professional sports in that of the San Diego soccer. They're so deep. They have so many star players. To me, they're going to be a tough team to beat. I mean, you'd have to be silly to bet against such an outstanding and high, highly skilled uh, team. Okay, one more question for you, Christian, and I know it's a sore spot, I'm sorry, but I've got to ask, your Ontario Fury, we're having a great regular season up until the last month of the campaign, and they ended up missing the postseason. What happened there? 
I mean, so like the tale of Lemony Snicket's, it was a series of unfortunate events that that transpired over the course of the season. I think a lot of it just had to deal with the fact that they lost their swagger. I mean, eight game losing streak. After a while, you're going to start developing losses and then it's going to start affecting you in, in between the ears. So I, I think it just didn't work out. It wasn't the season to be, but that's OK. They'll regroup rebound and next year's another year. Wish we could do this all day, man. But unfortunately, that is it. We got to cut it short. But thank you so much. Always appreciate your contributions, Philly. Take care, and uh, we will chat soon. Thanks. Uh, good luck to all the teams out there. I'll be watching with my popcorn and my feet up in the air. So good luck to everybody in the playoffs. And thanks again for having me on Primetime, Alex. Nothing but love, my man. Welcome back to MASL Primetime. You know, one of the best parts about doing this show is putting together the plays of the week and then eventually, of course, the plays of the year. But it's both a blessing and a curse. There are so many awesome plays to go through and some very worthy goals and saves, unfortunately, just get left out since there's not enough time to show them all. That being said, what did make the cut this year it's gonna blow your mind. Fasten your seatbelt. These are the best plays from the MASL's regular season. Off the boards, bench area recovered by the Heat. Right wing, shot from the box. Multiple saves on Cunningham, and I don't believe it. Segundos, Carlitos, que noten, que noten, viene Rio, la dispara, gol, 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 gol! The argument that Kansas City could have this. Oh, there's a shot. What a save. Chris Toth gets his hand on it. What a rocket by Tetsani. He gets it back. Shoots and scores! Dominic Francis. What a blast. From Danny Waltman. Here's Churas. Churas with a step to the middle, to the left foot. Still open. Shoot. He scores! Minutes. Every game. Oh, Good what side. a, what a, oh, ding dong on the rebound. And Van Scheme, that has come here with the end. Oh! <laughs> Pepe! We're tied in two! Hola, Rio. Si viene Garay, Garay para escalante. El rebote ahí. Le hace tu lebura. Gol, gol, gol. Ball, Pereira! Oh my word! You'll never see a volley of its equal. West sends it the length of the floor, and Pereira drops the hammer 2 nothing. Santana, good touch for Ferdinand. Over, Roque, shoots, he scores! Lucas Roque! That's the first time we said Bennett in a whole third it period. Is. Oh, and there's the shot, and that is a goal by Ian Bennett from distance. How? Did he do that? Playoffs is ball two. Sebastian Mendez with an opportunity. Valadez, oh, what a, what a save. save! Wow! Campinos, incredible save. Oh, Bob Dallas on the Shot! Oh, just wide! And there's the Kareem! Wow! And a goal from Cameron Brown, who is lying <laughs> on the ground! Dilema trying to find Tayu. Tayu heads it! We got a header! The King scores! The King scores! What an immaculate header! Way downfield. Headed away briefly by Meller, a chance ahead, SCORE! Oh, just being patient, oh and there's a middle, Reggett, oh and what a goal go. by Zach Reggett! Ties the game with a beautiful karate kick goal. That is Dantas, scoops that inside, Jamil Cox! Well, lovely execution! A little one-on-one -on -one here, leaves it off in front, Pereira's back to Carvalho, go! Wow, what a bomb! manera para Niancy, un pase taconazo! Goal! In three minutes, the Forest Pardo show again! One more to wrap it up, and Forest Pardo! Here's Bennett, he drives one into the goal from just inside the yellow, and Bennett gives Milwaukee the early lead. Masias, 
Over to Lovegrove with the shot, and there's the goal! Jamie Lovegrove with the laser shot makes it 4-0. to Leo, Leo on the volley, and Leo with the side net. The legend continues. Making runner with Chihuahua. See the shot go high, oh. and the rebound is put in. Right here in Ontario. Pacheco, Pacheco, he gets himself another goal. Sweet B, B, finding the back of the net. Cardinals, looking for Giles, his header, goal! Brame has sprung free down the right-hand side. Brame cuts across, he shoots and scores! Juan Gamboa, here's Leo Gibson again. Oh, and what a play! Leo Gibson plays it off to number 31, Christian Andaruz. Gets blocked, sent back over, Harris trying to get it out. Another blast! Oh, what a rip! Diegas! 7-2 late third. Oh, Dantas a drive and a goal! Wow. Dantas the hat trick off the volley! Moved across, Huffman, Derek's got a good look, shot a goal! Hey! Here's a long shot, goal! Segura, stepping over, slides it across, Gonzalez scores! Are you not entertained? What else could you ask for? And that is going to wrap things up for this week's show. But just a reminder, as we get into the playoffs now, your source for all things MASL to keep up to date are the league's official social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Enjoy the playoffs. We'll see you next week.